good afternoon students welcome to the 25th lecture of uh, refrigeration and air conditioning subject today in this class we are starting the other new topic in the refrigerants concept that is uh, one of the type of refrigerants that is hydrocarbon refrigerants and inorganic refrigerants and also we are starting the other concept called introduction to the evaporators so these are the three topics to be discussed in this class so in the last class we have discussed about the inorganic uh, the, the designation of the refrigerants uh, and the applications of refrigerants the calculation of refrigerants etc so today in this class we will discuss these three topics now so we will start the class get ready yes hydrocarbon refrigerants the name itself saying we are having the molecules called atoms called carbon hydrogen in the refrigerants okay so most of the refrigerants are successfully used in industrial and commercial applications so most of the hydrocarbon refrigerants so we are having generally four types of refrigerants one is halocarbon refrigerants or organic inorganic organic hydrocarbons like that so most of the hydrocarbon refrigerants are successfully used in commercial applications as well as industrial installations so industrial means big big factories are having the servers air conditioning uh, refrigeration and also commercial means the domestic plus uh, commercial they possess satisfactory thermodynamic properties so why they are commercially successful because they are pro they are providing satisfactory thermodynamic properties but are highly flammable and explosive so what is the disadvantage of this hydrocarbons the disadvantage of this hydrocarbons is they are highly flammable mande gunam unnayi at the same time they are explosive so pele gunam undi so the hydrocarbon refrigerants are commercially successed successful refrigerants where they are used in the market but only the thing disadvantage is avi mande gunamu plus pele gunamu unnayi the various hydrocarbon refrigerants are shown here or see here so these are the explosives and flammable then what is the chemical name given for this r170 three annapudu it is ethane type anamata so here whenever you are having three digits number it comes under ethane group so whenever you are having two digit number it comes under methane group ethane group and methane group now see r170 ethane that is c2h6 next r290 that is propane that is c3h3 next r600 that is butane that is c4 h10 next r600 a that is isobutane c4 h10 next r1120 that is trichloroethylene c2 h4 cl3 r1130 dichloroethylene c2 h4 cl2 r1150 ethylene c2 h6 r1270 that is propylene that is c3 h6 so these are the eight types of hydrocarbon refrigerants where they are used commercially and these are successful refrigerants where they are used till to date but only the disadvantage and they are highly flammable and explosive in nature next since the hydrocarbon refrigerants are not commercially used nowadays because of the two disadvantages right so that's why they are using other type of inorganic and organic refrigerants see the figure it shows the manufacturing of hydrocarbon refrigerants where it is located it is located far away from the city in the remote areas because of inflammable in nature so this is a industry setup where the hydrocarbon refrigerants are manufactured right next one inorganic refrigerants next one is a inorganic refrigerants r1 r717 r729 r744 r764 r118 
or some of the inorganic representatives where the chemical name is ammonia air carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide and water the chemical formulas are shown in the table now we are discussing about the inorganic representatives okay see here the r717 is known as ammonia so when you get any in your gate examinations you may get some of the fill up the blanks from some of the multiple choice questions right and also uh, you may get some of the theoretical prob uh, questions also so what are inorganic representatives and explain any one and you can write this type of setup got it now r717 that is ammonia the R717 ammonia is one of the oldest and most widely used. So it is most widely used and oldest form of refrigerants. Its greatest application is found in large and commercial reciprocating compression systems. So ammonia is a word which is existing since long years. Right? The refrigerants, what they are used is ammonia, which is very oldest one and where these are used for the commercial reciprocating compressor setup where high toxicity toxicity is secondary okay it is widely used in absorption type of system so vapor compression refrigeration system lokakunda this uh, ammonia are used in um, uh, this absorption type of system it is a chemical compound of nitrogen and hydrogen okay na? it is a chemical compound of nitrogen and hydrogen that is nh3 nitrogen and hydrogen under ordinary conditions it is a colorless gas then ammonia what you are saying it is a colorless it is a colorless gas next its boiling point at export measure pressure is minus 33.3 degrees the boiling point is minus 33.3 degrees and melting point is minus 78 degrees centigrade Okay, the lowest boiling point makes it possible to have refrigeration at temperatures below zero degree centigrade without using a pressures below atmospheric in the evaporator. Its latent heat of vaporization at minus 15 degree centigrade is 1315 kilojoules per kg. So, large refrigerating effects are possible with a relatively small size of machinery. The condenser pressure at 30 degree centigrade is 10.78 bar. The condensers for R717 are usually a water cool type so the whole thing you can get from this setup so if you get any question for this ammonia or any uh, choice you can write this ammonia so what are the best points of this ammonia the ammonia is a oldest type and largest oldest and most widely used refrigerant next point these are found large in applications in commercial reciprocating compression system type and the boiling point and melting point of this uh, uh, refrigerants are minus 33.3 degrees and minus 78 point uh, minus 78 degrees right and also the refrigerating effects are possible with relatively small small size of machinery and what type of uh, the refrigeration systems are using Ammonia are generally used for absorption type of vapor refrigeration system. The condensation pressure is 30 degrees centigrade at 7.10.78 uh, bar, and the condensers for generally used are for uh, this type is water cool type, right? So that's why our ammonia gave a great uh, advantage for this type of refrigerants, which are hydro, which are inorganic type. Next, R279, so the name itself is saying, we are not uh, maintaining any, uh, right, R729 air. So what is the R17, R717 is ammonia, R729 is a air. The dry air is used as a gaseous refrigerant. So the dry air which is in atmosphere, it is sucked into a comp sucked into a cylinder, and these are used for the gaseous refrigerants in some compression systems. 
particularly in the aircraft air conditioning system okay so the dry air is used as a gaseous refrigerant in some compression systems and in aircraft air conditioning systems so the next refrigerants to be discussed is r729 that is air next what is the third one r744 r744 that is carbon dioxide so what is the next one is r744 carbon dioxide the principal refrigeration use of carbon dioxide is same as that of the dry ice okay so the dry ice what you see is same that of the application of this carbon dioxide that is r744 so it is a non toxic in nature non irritating and non non flammable so smell raadu irritation undadu at the same time mande gunamu ledu so it is a completely clean uh, refrigerants where we can use in the in the refrigeration system so carbon dioxide is non irritating non toxic and non inflammable the boiling point of this refrigerant is minus 73.6 degrees centigrade and minus 15 degrees centigrade a pressure of well over 20.7 bar is required to prevent its evaporation okay a condenser temperature of 30 degrees centigrade a pressure of approximately 70 bar is required to liquefy the gas its critical temperature is 31 degree centigrade and the triple point is minus 56.6 degrees so due to the high operating pressure okay due to the high operating pressure the compressor of co2 refrigerator is very small okay however because its low efficiency as compared to the other refrigerants is used in household units but it is used in some industrial applications and abroad ships also so what the information about this carbon dioxide this hydrocarb this uh, carbon dioxide so this is simply nothing but dry air type of technology where you don't have any problems any knife edges any uh, things whatever they are finding in this terminology okay right so because of low efficiency this type of uh, carbon dioxide type of refrigerants are generally used in household items and also some industrial applications and for on the ships also so hydrocarbon dioxide is non irritating non toxic and non explosive and non flammable so it is it is completely safe and secure so that is nothing but r744 next the next type is sulfur dioxide what is the next one r764 is a sulfur dioxide this refrigerant is produced by a by the combustion of sulfur so how this refrigerant is produced this is produced by combustion of sulfur in the air that is that's why it is nothing but sulfur dioxide so the combustion it is produced by the combustion combustion means production of heat the combustion of sulfur in the air in former years it was widely it was widely used in household applications and small commercial units boiling point is minus 10 degrees centigrade and a condenser pressure ranges between 4.1 to 6.2 bar the latent heat of sulfur dioxide is minus 15 degrees centigrade right so these are the some specifications given to the sulfur dioxide refrigerant so it is very stable refrigerant with high critical temperature so when compared to the carbon dioxide sulfur dioxide is a very stable refrigerant with a high critical temperature and is non flammable and non explosive also so when you rate the carbon dioxide versus sulfur dioxide we can give the rate we can give the rating to the sulfur dioxide okay so even though this is non explosive and non inflammable it is having a stable refrigerant with a high critical temperature it has a very unpleasant and irritating smell and odor 
the refrigerant is not injurious to food and is usually commercially as a ripener and a preservative of foods okay so what it is saying so the sulfur dioxide is not injurious to the food that's why this sulfur dioxide is, is used for uh, plants and flowers for ripening and preservatives of the food however extremely injurious to flowers plants and strawberry the sulfur dioxide in its pure state is not corrosive so pure state low corrosive metal unde, it is non corrosive right so whenever this one uh, but when there is a moisture present in the atmosphere the mixture forms sulfurous acid which is corrosive to steel this is very important to reinforcing system we held in the third right so that's why because of this non corrosive or non um, flammable these are not dangerous to the food and uh, these are used for ripening of the food however extremely injurious to flowers plants and shrubbery the sulfur dioxide in its pure state is not corrosive pure state low unte it is not corrosive but when there is a moisture present in this then it turns to sulfuric acid which is corrosive in nature thus it is very important that the moisture in the refrigerating system to be held in the minimum the sulfur dioxide does not mix readily with the oil so what's the other condition the sulfur dioxide refrigerant does not mix readily with the oil therefore an oil igniter an oil lighter that used with other refrigerants may be used with the compressors okay therefore an oil lighter other than that used oil refrigerator other than that is used for using in the compressors the refrigerant in the evaporator with oil floating on the top has a tendency to have a higher boiling point than that of the corresponding to its thing so that is the uh, advantages disadvantages and specifications of sulfur dioxide that is r764 what the point so these are some of the hydrocarbon refrigerants and inorganic refrigerants which are very useful for the exam point of view what is the next third one next one is r118 r118 is water okay next fourth type of uh, inorganic refrigerant is water h2o so the principal refrigeration use of water is as ice so everything ice with so so the refrigerant what we are using is use form is as ice the high freezing temperature of water limits the use of vapor compression system it is used as a refrigerant vapor in which type of systems water is used in a vapor absorption type of systems with steam jet compressors so what type of compressors we are using for this water type we are using steam jet compressors and this type of doing assault right so this type of refrigerant which is used so we have to take care and we have to resolve it right so these are all about refrigerants topic uh, got it so this is all about the refrigerants the type of refrigerants the nomenclature of refrigerants applications of refrigerants and the uh, forms of refrigerants now next we'll switch on to the other topic that is condensers evaporators 
have condensers, evaporators, and next topic is evaporators. The next topic to be discussed is a evaporator topic. Later, we will discuss about condenser and expansion devices. Got it? Next. What is the meaning of evaporator? So, generally, evaporator is a component where it is located in the refrigeration flow type system. Then, what does evaporator do? The evaporator is simply nothing but exchanger. It is a heat exchanger. Here, the refrigerant boils or evaporator at, at some temperature. So, in the evaporator, the refrigerant either organic or inorganic is boiled or evaporates and in the doing so, what happens? So, absorbs the heat from energy. It absorbs the heat from energy. It absorbs the heat from substance being in refrigerated. The name of the evaporator refers to the evaporation process. So the name of the evaporator refers to the evaporation process occurring in the heat exchanger. So below see the figure is nothing but a simple form of evaporator. So what does it is saying? The evaporator is an heat exchanger where it boils and or evaporates or being ideal so the refrigerant and in doing so absorbs the heat from the substance being refrigerated later the name evaporator refers to the evaporating evaporation process occurring in the heat exchanger occurring in the heat exchanger next the evaporator becomes cold and remains cold due to some of the reasons Okay, so during the process, the evaporator becomes cold and remains cold as it is, or it may increase or decrease. So the evaporator becomes cold during the operation and during the operation if it is cold then normally you have eyesight right so the evaporator becomes cold and remains cold due to the following reasons what are the first reason here the temperature of the evaporator coil the temperature of the evaporator coil is low due to the low temperature of the refrigerants inside the coil. So generally the temperature of the evaporator coil is low in condition and at the same time inside the factory also inside the factory also you are maintaining the low temperature refrigerants inside the coil. So that is the first reason of evaporator becomes cold and remains cold. Medium treatment is so in the process. Second point is the low temperature of refrigerants remains unchanged because so whenever the refrigerant become cold, it never been unchanged. So at that point, when the temperature of refrigerants remains low and unchanged, because any heat it absorbs is converted into is converted into latent heat as boiling proceeds. So what it is saying, so it is unchanged because the heat what it is produced is absorbed. The heat absorbed is converted into heat discharge. So right, this right. So the evaporator is also known as a coil, a cooling coil, a chilling coil, or a freezing coil. So evaporator manuela and nirakalaga plavachu evaporator is nothing but a cooling chamber, a cooling coil, a chilling coil, 
a freezing coil the evaporator cools by using the refrigerant's latent heat so evaporator ela cool chestundi machine ni it takes the information in the same way it takes the information and send fast to the apajit so uh, a cooling coil or a chilling coil it will be converted due to the latent heat of the refrigerant okay the evaporator cools by using the refrigerant's latent heat of vaporization to absorbs heat from the medium cooling cool heat from the medium being cool so this is the technique what they are using for conversion of for the uh, conversion of the process so it becomes cool because of first point ent the temperature of the evaporator coil is low due to the low temperature of the refrigerant inside the coil next point the evaporator is also known as cooling coil chilling coil and freezing coil so evaporator manu emu pilustunnamo evaporator manavi cooling coil ni pilavachu chilling coil ni pilavachu chilling evaporator ni na pilavachu right so the evaporator cools by using what by using the refrigerant's latent heat so normal heat kaakunda refrigerant latent heat is is using for vaporization to absorb the heat from the outside atmosphere so that is the concept of evaporator got it next next is the types of types and classifications of evaporators okay the next topic is types and uh, types and or classification of evaporators so based on some of the things the evaporator are classified into many types so according to the first classification according to the type of construction and the exterior construction how it is done exterior construction how it is done so the first one is bare tube coil evaporator bare tube coil so bare means without having anything so bare tube coil evaporator second one finned tube evaporator according to the type of construction lo the first one is bare tube coil evaporator the second one is finned finned tube evaporator next one is plate plate evaporator next one is shell and tube evaporator so these are the four main types according to the type of construction okay so the first one is bare tube evaporator the first one is a bare tube coil evaporator the second one is finned tube evaporator the third one is a plate type of evaporator the fourth one is a shell and tube type of evaporator shell and tube type of evaporator so we will discuss this four type of evaporators now next next one is shell and coil evaporator shell and coil evaporator next one is tube in tube evaporator next one is a tube in tube evaporator so these are the six types of evaporators based upon the construction next type is according to the manner according to the manner in which the liquid refrigerant is fed so according to the manner means according to the way or path or uh, according to the information where the liquid refrigerant is fed in the low first one is flooded evaporator second one is dry expansion evaporator okay na first one is a flooded evaporator second one is a dry expansion evaporator dry expansion evaporator next third point according to the mode of heat transfer third one is according to the mode of what type of heat transfer you are providing for the setup natural convection evaporator type and forced convection evaporator type okay na the classification the third one is according to the mode of heat transfer heat transfer is ela jarugutundi by the convection process or forced convection process the last one is a 
according to the operating conditions according to the operating conditions what are the operating conditions frosting evaporator non frosting evaporator defrost evaporator so these are the various types of operating systems of the refrigeration what are the various types of operating systems for refrigeration frostration defrostration and non frost evaporator so frost frosting and defrosting and dnt for example if you go to your refrigerator in your house and open it so you can see the top one is a deep freeze lower one is a normal temperature or if you are having double door refrigerator just open the top one and open the bottom one so you can see the temperature changes in top one and bottom one so what's the reason behind that so whenever you are using the refrigerator so inside your deep freeze everything is converted into ice everything uh, the blocks it will be totally and looking it is not fair then what is the thing you have to do so ice to ice gaddal gatti mottam deep freeze unna podu rain chestaru so dani meed unna gaani dani pakkana unna gaani dani kinda side unna gaani oka lever ni push chestaru right so a small button a knob where if you will push it then automatically it is reverse switches and the right so here frosting and defrosting means so in the deep freeze whenever the ice is there so if you forget it and if you leave it leave it there like that only it will become hard and it will become solid then when you press the switch in the refrigerator appudu manaki tree frost anustundi so what is the meaning of defrost defrost chestina appudu the freeze will be shut down thereby the ice cubes or ice things will be slowly converted into water and it is going to the bucket is going to the what is the point so these are the various types of four types of uh, evaporator systems right according to the type of construction according to the manner which the liquid is uh, used according to the mode of heat transfer according to the operating conditions next next topic is heat transfer in evaporators heat transfer in evaporators how the heat is transferred in evaporator the next one is a heat transfer in evaporators the heat transfer in evaporators has the following three resistance to be withstand what is the first one the resistance of medium being cooled the resistance of medium being cooled this may be air water or brine or any other fluid of cooling and dehumidification coil so what is the next thing the resistance of metallic wall of tube liquid so it will resist the resistance of metallic wall of tube liquid third one is the resistance of cooling medium right the third one is a the resistance of cooling medium that is the refrigerating filling will get heat uh, from solid metallic walls solid metallic walls right
got it the resistance of cooling medium which gets heat from the solid metals so these are the three main types of heat transfer in the evaporating system so with this we'll stop the class i have the other class tomorrow we'll discuss the other new topics in this uh, evaporator subject right so i'll stop the class here uh, Okay. So we'll stop the class. Have a nice day. Stay home, stay safe.